sometimes uh, following Jesus is a lot like what just happened there. Um, there's times when uh, he can seem so far away, and other times when he seems so close. And it makes me think of what David wrote in the 23rd Psalm. It's really, you know, well known. Everybody knows it. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to try to recite it by memory. And as I do, I want you to think about the journey of life that we all go on, because that's what David's describing in Psalm 23. It's a song about the journey of life and who we choose to follow and uh, what God does in our life when we understand it and when we don't understand it. And uh, so, you know, it goes like this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In other words, he's going to take care of what I need. I'm going to have what I need. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. And you know, there's times we go through life, uh, just like with uh, our recent illness, where we're kind of forced to uh, just lay down and experience God's peace and God's rest and let him minister to us and prepare us for what he wants us to do in the next steps ahead. And maybe that's where you're at in your life right now, in your journey with God. Or maybe he's already led you through that. But you know, the journey goes on in the 23rd Psalm. It goes on and it says, He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And that means following Jesus involves us learning his word. And instead of following what the world says to do and live by, we choose to follow the path of Jesus, the, the right way to follow. He's the light of the world. So he leads us in paths of righteousness, not unrighteousness. And if we're going to follow him, we need to follow those paths of righteousness and what he says is right, not what the world says is right. And then it goes on and the song talks about the tough times of life. David says, Yeah, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And of course, the shepherd's rod and the staff, uh, the staff is used to guide a sheep when it's getting astray, starting to get away from the fold. And he can use that to direct the sheep back in. But also, when it's used like a rod, it's used like a weapon to protect the sheep from the predators and the things that would try to destroy the sheep. And so knowing that even when we go through times of extreme difficulty where we even face death, we know that we have the presence of the shepherd there and that he's using these things around us and in his hands that will guide us through. The song goes on on this journey as we follow him through life, through all the ups and downs, the mountains and the valleys. And it goes on and it says, You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. This is saying that even when we face the disagreements that we get into in life with people and people don't agree with maybe our stance on our following Jesus or our beliefs or they seek to do something that would um, harm us or cause us to try to be quiet and to stop following him, David says, I experience your presence, God, and you're providing for me even as we go through the difficulties of this life and the enemies that we face in this life. You have prepared a table for me and my cup of blessing is overflowing. And that overflowing cup is our spirit as we open our life to his Holy Spirit dwelling in us and working in us and through us. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And that's the end game. That's the end goal, is our hope to be able to, for all eternity, experience the peace of Christ, the presence of Christ, even beyond the troubles of this life. When we have chosen to follow Christ as our Savior and King, then he has set up a kingdom for those of us that willingly want to have him as king. And for those who don't want him as king, well, they're not going to be in his kingdom. 
So we need to choose who we're going to follow, who's going to be our shepherd. And that's what I'm going to be speaking about this Sunday as we begin a series of uh, what it means to follow Jesus. And here's the thing. Jesus calls all of us to follow him. It's an open invitation. But he does call each of us to follow him differently. Now, don't get nervous about that, but, you know, there are some general things that all of us need to do to follow Jesus, but he does call each of us to follow him specifically in certain ways because of talents and gifts that he's given us. And that's what we're going to be thinking about uh, throughout this month of February. And so I hope that you'll join us on Sunday mornings, whether it's in person or online. And I want you to think about what it means to follow Jesus. I'm still trying to figure it out. And I'm still following him, and there's times when I feel distant, uh, and then there's times when I feel like uh, I'm close. Um, But it's all about following him on the journey. I hope that you're on that journey and that you won't be discouraged and know that he is walking with you and guiding you, and he's available. Even if you stray, he's calling you back, and he wants you to be part of his family and his kingdom. God bless you.